Hey everyone, and welcome back. In our last video, we spent some time going over the theory behind multivariable integration, but now it's time to put that theory to use. We're gonna compute our very first double integral, the integral from zero to four of the integral from minus one to one of x squared root y dx dy. Now you may remember from the overview that I put brackets around the inner integral. In practice though, this isn't something that we actually do. We just remember to read our integrals from the inside out. So in this example, we're first tasked with evaluating this inner integral, the integral from minus one to one of x squared root y dx. Okay, the dx is saying that we're integrating with respect to x, which means all other variables are gonna be treated like constants but otherwise we integrate as normal. We find an antiderivative, plug in the upper bound, plug in the lower bound, and take the difference. So the question is, what's an antiderivative for x squared root y if we're integrating with respect to x? Well, since root y is gonna be treated like a constant, our antiderivative will be x cubed over three root y. This gives us the integral from zero to four, our outer integral, which I'll deal with in a moment, and now I sub in my antiderivative, x cubed over three root y, I evaluate from minus one to one, and then I have dy at the end. Now you'll notice here that I've actually included the variable name in my bounds. This is likely something you didn't do back in Calc 2, and you're not required to do it here. But since we're dealing with both x's and y's, doing this can help you to remember which variable is gonna be replaced by these bounds. Subbing in these bounds for x, we get the integral from zero to four, of one cubed over three root y minus minus one cubed over three root y dy. And after simplification, we have the integral from zero to four of two thirds root y dy. All right, well now this is just a calc two problem. To find an antiderivative for this expression with respect to y, I increase the power by one and divide by the new power. So my power here is one half, I'm gonna increase it to three halves and divide by three halves. This gives me two thirds y to the three halves divided by three halves evaluated from zero to four. I can actually clean up my coefficient here by flipping this bottom fraction up and multiplying. I get four ninths, and now I'm gonna substitute in my two bounds, four to the three halves minus zero to the three halves. That gives me a final answer of 32 over nine. And with that, folks, congratulations! You've just computed your very first double integral. Not so bad, right? It's always helpful to keep the geometric picture in mind as well. Here's the graph of the function x squared root y for x between minus one and one and y between zero and four. This function is positive, right? It lives above the xy plane, which means this double integral can be interpreted as the volume under our surface and above the xy plane on this particular domain. It's the volume of the solid region shown here. I'd like to end this video by pointing out a sneaky little trick that some of you may have noticed during the last computation. Remember, we were computing this double integral and we started with the integral on the inside, the integral from minus one to one of x squared root y dx. We said that root y could be treated like a constant, right? And we know from Calc 2 that constants can be pulled outside of the integral. So why don't we pull this root y term outside of our integral? We can write this as the integral from zero to four of root y times the integral from minus one to one x squared dx dy. Hmm, interesting. But there's actually something more that we can pull out here. Notice that this integral, the integral from minus one to one of x squared dx, is just a real number, right? When we evaluate this integral, we're gonna get a real number, and therefore we could pull it out of this integral with respect to y. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull this out front. We get the integral from minus one to one of x squared dx times the integral from zero to four of root y dy. Ooh, what we've done here is we've separated this double integral into a product of two single integrals. We've taken the x's out as one integral, we've taken the y's out as a second integral. In general, you can always do this when you're integrating over a rectangle, like we're doing here, and your integrand, this expression here, nicely factors into an x term and a y term. You can't have stuff that's all tangled up. 
but if it separates nicely, you can always do this little trick. So formally, if we have the integral from A to B of the integral from C to D of a product that separates nicely like this, g of x times h of y dy dx, we can always split it into the integral from a to b of g of x dx times the integral from c to d of h of y dy. Something to keep in mind.